Hello, I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton and welcome to Health and Wellness. Regular exercise is key to keeping a healthy weight and staying fit, but for people with exercise bulimia, the long hours in the gym are a desperate compulsion to purge calories that actually puts their lives at risk. What makes this eating disorder all the more dangerous? It hides in plain sight. Here's Callie Carlin with more on the story. Get tired! Encouraged, celebrated, and just plain healthy. Keeping fit is an American ideal. Started off innocently, maybe like, you know, three or four times a week. For Robin Yamanaka, working out seemed perfectly normal. After all, she is a professional fitness trainer. However, Robin ended up on a path to self-destruction, battling a little-known disorder, exercise bulimia. It got to a point where I was working out three hours a day, if not more, and I didn't take a day off for about six years. Not even Christmas or not Thanksgiving? Not even Christmas or Thanksgiving. I think it's becoming epidemic. Dr. Marianne Rosenthal is the clinical director at Casa Palmera, an inpatient treatment center in San Diego. An exercise bulimic is focused on the ritual of exercising, and that is that method of purging. People think that they get a, a pass because they're not vomiting, they're not using laxatives, so they're not really purging. And they will say it's very hard to diagnose because exercise is great, right? I think a lot of people don't talk about it because the big thing is the epidemic of obesity in America. Not enough people exercise, everyone overeats. So if you're thin and you exercise a lot, hey, you're, you're great. Everyone thought I was amazing and superwoman because I was working out so hard and I was 8% body fat. Everyone praised me for all this stuff, but my health was probably worse or off than someone that was, you know, 100 pounds overweight. I have, mm. I have more health problems than someone that's overweight because I was underweight. There's fatigue, there's reproductive problems, there's depression, there's anxiety, there is, I mean, it, it, can, it can kill them. Robin was exercising herself to death. Her bones had weakened to the equivalent of a 65-year-old female. She suffered from osteoporosis, a stress fracture, and lost her period for eight years. And, you know, I don't know if I can have kids now, the intense exercise routines also kept her from family time, vacations, and hobbies. I used to do a lot of theater, and I stopped doing that because my workout took so much out of me. So I missed out on a lot of stuff, and it's sad because, you know, I wish I could get it back, but there's no way. It's an addiction. When people are really heavily into their addictions, they can't stop without help. Her parents got her that help at a treatment center in Utah. I'm just so grateful that they did that for me because there's so many girls out there that, you know, they don't have the money to go, their insurance isn't going to cover it, their parents don't want to pay for it because they don't think that they really have a problem. And I was lucky enough to have parents that were like, no, you're going to go back and you're going to face this. But it was tough to face even with the help. The recovery rate for any eating disorder is extremely low. I've heard it and I believe it that it's more difficult than alcoholism or drugs because you can abstain from those things. You just cut them out of your life. With eating, you have to still eat. And she wanted to exercise again, but going to the gym proved challenging. It's frustrating because here I would get my therapist telling me, oh, you gotta gain weight, and I go to the gym and everyone's like, oh, you're so thin. I wish I was as thin as you. It's like, well, then why do I want to give this up? Everyone looks up to me. Everyone, you know, praises me for how thin I am and how hard I work out. And then I just have this one person telling me to gain weight. She fought against the odds, and Robin won her battle with exercise bulimia. Today, she is healthy and back to work full-time as a trainer. Plus, she recently performed on stage, a goal she made while in treatment. Feels great. Feels wonderful. So, I'm really lucky. And Callie is here to talk with me about exercise bulimia. Callie, 
a lot of us have friends and family members who are really fit and exercise a lot. How do you know whether that has crossed the line from just good health practices to something like exercise bulimia? Right, well some of the warning signs are first of all, are they missing important things for exercise, whether it's school or work or family events or social activities. A lot of times those with exercise bulimia will miss these things. Another thing is that they'll work out even when they're sick or ill, they'll still go to the gym. Plus, if they miss an exercise, they actually get anxious, they get anxiety and depression, and they'll also equate what they allow themselves to eat based on whether or not they've worked out. I was also struck that it really can affect men as well as women, because a lot of times you think of this along the same spectrum maybe as an eating disorder. How many men are affected? Absolutely. Well, with other forms of eating disorders like anorexia or traditional bulimia through vomiting or purging, it affects women much more so right. than it affects men, but with this, it's about equal. And that's because I think it's so socially acceptable for men to work out where it's not socially acceptable for men to diet. In your research for this piece, what did you find are some of the good interventions that someone can do if they think their friend or relative is suffering from this? Well, the one thing the experts stressed over and over is that the sooner there is intervention and the sooner there is help, the more likely the person is to fully recover. And it's so important because this has the highest, eating disorders have the highest rate of mortality for any mental illness. But the best, the best treatment is therapy and then either inpatient treatment or outpatient depending on the severity of the case. So important. And I think really you said it perfectly, the social context of this is really it's very different than something that's negative. This is something that you know you think it's exercise, it's fitness, it must be good. And in medicine, we always say most things in moderation. I think this is no different, right? Absolutely. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Until next time, wishing you good health.